It's the summer of 1940 and Japan is at the doorstep of Australia, which has limited defenses and no tank. The Australian army knew what they wanted for a tank, but there were no plans, no factories, tooling, etc. to build one. And she could not get tanks from Britain or the US because they both were all out replenishing the loss of Britain's armaments from the monumental failure at Dunkirk. Stepping up was Robert Menzies, the Australian Prime Minister, who requested help from the British War Department, and two months later was sent Colonel W.D. Watson of the Royal Artillery. Colonel Watson met Australian engineer Alan H. Chamberlain in the United States for the purpose of assessing the developments of the American Mark III General Lee, the Canadian Mark II Ram, and the British Crusader II. Returning to Australia, Watson and Chamberlain then decided to base their new tank design on the engine, drivetrain, and lower hull of the Mark III General Lee and the turret and two-pound cannon of the British Crusader II. For power, several engines were looked at. The Pratt & Whitney Wasp radial engine, which turned out to be in high demand as an aircraft engine, thus not available, and the Guyverson radial diesel engine, which was just too problematic. Fortunately, there were plenty of Cadillac 75 engines, but there was a problem. The engine only put out 110 horsepower, and that was not enough to drive the new tank. How that problem was solved was quite the engineering feat. Colonel Watson came up with the idea of using three Cadillac 75 V8 engines, which put out 330 horsepower, and set up in what was to be called a clover leaf. Just visible in this picture is the third engine's drive shaft coming down from above and going between the other two side-by-side -side engines. That third engine is in the very back of the tank and the two side-by-side -side were located amidship. The cloverleaf design was later simplified by the Frenchman Robert Perrier. The three Cadillac engines were connected together and turned a single drive shaft putting out 397 horsepower. The engine was to be used in the AC-3 tank which was never built. The engineers and designers in the Fighting Vehicle Production Unit under Director A.R. Code decided to make the hull a single iron casting, completely unheard of at the time. Most British hulls were riveted and welded together in plates. Other parts added to the hull were also cast iron. Since there were no existing facilities to produce the Sentinel, a workable one needed to be found. A railway factory in Sydney was modified to produce the tanks. When the Sentinel program ended, the factory was refitted to producing railway equipment. The Sentinel went from a drawing board to a full production tank in 22 months. That's faster than any other tank had ever been produced. The first tank, serial number 8001, came off the assembly line in July 1942. Road trials followed in August and completed in June 1943. Some of the 65 AC-1s were used for training and testing, with the bulk going into storage until after the war when most were disposed of. Some hulls were used as tractors and some ended up in museums like this one in Wovington, England and can be viewed there at the tank festival held every summer. An interesting side note, a few Sentinels made it to Hollywood, making their movie debut in the 1944 movie The Rats of Tobruk, though under German markings and modified somewhat to look like German tanks. In 